again, everyone, and welcome to Stuck in the 90s. My name is Jerry Strauss, and this is the show where we go back to the times when the colors were bright, the clothes were brighter, and it just may have been some of the best times of your life. My name, as I said, Jerry Strauss, and we've got a great guest for you this week. Of course, one of the uh, most memorable cinematic uh, efforts that came out of the 90s, one of the movements, you could say, all started with a little black and white film that uh, came straight out of Jersey, kind of like me. Uh, That film, of course, Clerks, the man behind it, Kevin Smith, and so much great talent in that film. We've got one of those very memorable uh, personalities with us this week, Marilyn Gigliotti. Did I pronounce that right? You did. Hi, how are you? (laughs) Hi. I've been worried about that. I've been stressed about that for <laughs> 20 minutes. That's funny, because it's like when, when uh, uh, Siskel and Ebert first did a, a review, I was holding my breath. It's like, are they going to pronounce my last name right or not? <laughs> <laughs> what, how, how do people pronounce it? Because I'm, I'm not sure really what the natural way to say it was. I just, I just guessed. Well, I mean, well, it depends where you're from, for one, but it, it, the H throws everybody off, and basically that H is very silent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, gig, it's Gigliotti. Gotcha. And you're you're originally from New York, so I, I can't even imagine <laughs> the pronunciations <laughs> that you got. And then oh, yeah. Over. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few different ways. <laughs> well, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show. This is really cool. I'm I'm a big fan of... Of all the the early that that unbelievably innovative and influential Kevin Smith uh, that body of work and the cool thing is that I I feel like there's a big portion of that and a big portion of the players involved that have been heard from many 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 times and then there's someone like you who was so important to the movie that started it all and I feel like uh, this is a cool opportunity to uh, maybe um, Get some some information and learn about you, some people who may have never really heard you uh, as frequently in interviews before. Okay. Well, so. And thank you for having me on the show as well. I appreciate uh, it. No, no. Pleasure is all mine. Ours, okay. really. I speak for uh-huh. everyone listening. Thank um, you. <laughs> so I, I want to start at the beginning a little bit. Um, okay. and, and this is sort of the journey of an actress, which is uh, sort of... Uh, uh, more of a classic journey that we haven't really explored with anyone on this show yet. Now, you um, you were born in New York. Um, you started out, and I'm getting a lot of this information, actually, from your own website, which is very informative, by the way. Very oh, thank helpful. you. <laughs> um, so you, you actually, you were born in New York, and you moved to Sayreville, New uh-huh. Jersey, uh-huh. which, <laughs> for people who don't know, I, I come from uh, Woodbridge, so... Okay. Was, uh, yeah, right next door, pretty much. Um, yeah. So you went to high school, got your beautician's license. At that point, was that sort of your career path, your goal, uh, as far as what you were going to do for your future? Well, um, and and to some degree, yes. Um, growing up, I enjoyed watching the old movies, the old Hollywood movies with the singing and the dancing and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I wanted to take dance lessons and, and all that kind of stuff. But but um, my family was, you know, roof over the head, food on the table, clothes on the back. And that mm-hmm. was pretty much it. You know, they, my parents were raised very old school. They came from Puerto Rico. Um, and so there wasn't things of those nature for them growing up. So, and they come from huge families on both sides. So, they, you know, that that was all stuff that wasn't even extracurricular for them. It was just stuff, you know, to do. It was, you know, you had to go to school to learn, and that was about it. Um, and nothing against that. Uh, you know, that's that's what they knew. That's what that's how they grew up. Um, so I was always a very creative person. Um, I would I would doodle. Um, and so if any of those things were actually explored and maybe 
um, I'm not quite sure of the proper word to say, but, you know, just maybe supported. Who knows what might have come of all of that. So when it came to a time in my age where it's like, uh, you know, was able to kind of maybe think for myself a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. And now in, in high school, my high school actually did offer cosmetology. But uh, I didn't take it in high school um, because I would have had to have learned how to dissect a frog in order to take that class as a prerequisite. And I'm like, I just, you know, not something I really want to do. Um, Wait, 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 wait. Where where does that come in? (laughs) Well, because you needed to take biology because in cosmetology, you do need to learn the muscles, the the bones of the head and the shoulders and certain aspects of it because they do come into play when huh. you do certain things for cosmetology. Um, so in in high school, the prerequisite to that was actually taking biology where you learn all that stuff. And unfortunately, also in biology is having to dissect the frog. I remember <laughs> it well. <laughs> and so I that's not something I wanted to do, so I didn't do it at that time. Um, and so once I graduated, I, I joined the office workforce and um, I basically got married and had a child and after I had my daughter is when I thought, you know, I just don't really want to go back to that office job and that's when I went to school for cosmetology and and that's what I thought. That's where I I really thought my path was going to take me because I I really had an interest in it And, and that was the first time I ever did as well as I did in classes as well. Um, because I was basically a C-average student. Mm -hmm. Um, But, uh, you know, um, once I I was in a salon and I was doing well, I was working well, then came another life-changing moment. Um, And going through some changes with my life and my marital situation, and that's when I kind of started exploring other avenues of, trying to find myself, and that's where I kind of stepped into acting. And that's and interesting, because you actually go ahead and you mention that um, on your bio, on your website, and it's sort of an interesting thing. You hear all kinds of reasons why people fall into acting or entertainment or why they gravitate toward it at different points mm-hmm. in their life. So it, it seems like for you it was almost uh, for therapeutic reasons. Is that how you would describe it? Yeah, you know, um, it's it's funny because it's like the way it kind of started out was because I am of such a certain stature, (laughs) petite modeling was kind of big at that time. And so I said, well, well, you know, let me see. Let me check this out. And shoe modeling, because it's like shoe models are basically a size six, and that's what my shoe size was and is. (laughs) And so it, it's like it kind of went through this this kind of path of, I don't know, kind of going back and forth and where I just started looking papers for certain things and I found these classes in Red Bank, New Jersey uh, by the Actors Training Institute uh, um, and I started studying there and I really enjoyed it. And I have to say, you know, yes, it's very therapeutic, uh, you know, if... if who needs a psychiatrist when you have acting classes? Uh, it, it really opens up your mind and really be, you have to really become aware of yourself and um, certain things in your life. Of, so it's great therapy. Um, and But I studied for about a good two years before I felt comfortable that I can go out and start auditioning, at least in the community theater circuit. But when I finally found myself on stage for that first time, that's mm-hmm. when I knew. That's <laughs> that's when I knew. I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. So was and, that and my passion your... changed. <laughs> <laughs> was that your uh, original, I mean, your focus at that point when you when you decided to put yourself out there in the world to, to try to act? Um was live theater more of your focus, more of your thing, or were you also going for different 
film projects and things like that? Well, no, I mean, I was I was basically just kind of going where the ball would lead me. Um, I, you know, I I really had no idea. It's like I yeah, I I took the classes. I took like I said, two years of that, learning the different methods and styles and and things like that. But I mean, I I still I, I had no clue really where I was going to wind up. Um, I didn't know that it was going to be film. I mean, I didn't know that I'd actually be able to make anything of it, you know. So it was basically just kind of seeing where it leads me. That's that's pretty amazing. Um, I, I don't know if you uh, were a fan of the show The Office. Um, they they did a storyline where one of the characters, Andy, became uh, he, he threw himself full time into trying to become. Uh, a, a big actor, and there was a throwaway joke where they mentioned that he's got a full schedule of student film auditions, and mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's funny, but it, you know, I, I was actually sort of wondering. I mean, is that is there a point where you, you're really putting yourself out there, trying to get yourself in front of any camera, trying to get yourself on any stage, just anything like that, to get the experience and get sort of the the demo reel? Is that something that you experienced? Um, in the very beginning, yeah, um, once I felt that I had to grow from the fear experience, and once the film area was kind of starting to open itself up to me, I felt like, yeah, you know, let's, let's now gain some experience and some footage and put a reel together and things like that. Um, but now... For me now, it's a little bit different, um, especially at, since Clerks. Mm-hmm. It's 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 hard to put it into words because, to some degree, I am kind of like this well-known actress, and and when like for quite a few years after Clerks, you know, people would say it's like, oh, you're Marilyn, you're a movie star, and this and that, and I would be like, no, I am not. I just, I, I made one movie. It's like, you know, uh, to, to me, that does not classify a movie star. A movie star is someone who's actually making a living as an actress and, you know, constantly making films and things like that. Um, but at a certain point, I kind of realized, wow, I'm really kind of negating what people are saying to me and myself. And I kind of realized, you know, I'm kind of holding my, myself back to some degree by not validating the, what people are saying to me. It's like, okay, so what? I'm only known for one thing. Um, but to some degree, that also kind of hindered things as well because it's like, okay, well, Marilyn, what have you done since then? Um, well, I've been trying to get work and I've been trying to get auditions. I've been taking classes. I'm working on myself and things like that. But... You know, it, it's Hollywood's not easy, and and you know neither is the film industry. So it, it's a it's it's a continuous kind of work thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, let, let let's just go back for a second. Let's go back okay. to um, how long were you out there in the world acting um, before the even the idea or the opportunity of Clerks came to you? Um. Oh gosh. Probably just a little under ten years maybe. Um okay. Well, no, you know what? No. Let me take that back. Um <laughs> I I would say at the minimum maybe about six years at the most, maybe eight. Okay. So somewhere in that range and Yeah, uh, somewhere in that range. So how did you become aware of this? Was there some sort of an open audition or was how did how did you get involved in Clerks? I heard I was in the process of um, rehearsals for a show at the time um, in 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 Red Bank, and uh, through the grapevine, everybody's talking about oh someone's holding auditions over at the First Avenue Playhouse, uh, some student film or some kids making this film, and uh, if anybody wants to audition, they have to go this night and whatever. And uh, so um, where they held the auditions is a place that I've actually um, done some theater work at. Uh, so I basically just kind of showed up and went to the audition and did a monologue and and 
pretty much the rest of history on that one. Do you um, remember it? Was there a, a, a ton of people there auditioning? or There were a ton of people there, mostly looky Uh Mostly what? <laughs> looky <laughs> Is that... <laughs> You've never heard that term before? Um, you know, there were a lot of people there, but they were just kind of watching to see what was kind of going on, what was happening, and all that kind of stuff. Um, probably a good mix of half and half, though. Okay. So there were, so there were a lot of people just hanging out, people who knew people, or people yeah. who were just passing the time. So, I mean, like, for instance, did you, I, I mean, I, I know you, you said you just short, sort of showed up. At some point, between the time you showed up and the time when you actually auditioned, um, how did you get to the point of auditioning for that specific part? From what I understand, uh, Kevin pretty much, once I got off the stage, just had me in mind for Veronica. Um, so you didn't audition for Veronica, like, specifically? No. No, because I don't believe that I can remember uh, there was even a breakdown of any kind of cast and what it was about or anything like that. Uh, it, it was pretty much, you know, show up with a monologue, it's going to be taped, and that's it. Um, so, and I don't recall how long after that Kevin did contact me and basically asked if I would come down to the convenience store where he was working <laughs> and um, we talked for a bit. He had me take the script home because of certain little areas of dialogue <laughs> and <laughs> whether I'd be comfortable with it or not. And I, I remember taking it home, and I actually took it to work. I was, I was in the salon actually working at the time, and I'm reading the script. And I was very much enjoying it um, and laughing. So, so I pretty much called him back and said, yeah, I've got no problem. I mean, you know, it's... I'm acting, I'm talking about it, and, you know, it's, of course. Um, and so it was soon after that that he was, he was still casting um, some of the male roles. And so he had me go to to uh, actually read with whomever he was going to cast in the role of Dante, and I was very, very, very happy to see Brian O'Halloran because I had actually worked with him before. Oh, Okay. So, he was was he a frequent uh was he working a lot in the area at the time? But, well Brian and I we yeah, we both come from the same area. Okay. So he was doing a lot of theater just like you were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I remember the first time I actually saw Brian, um, before I actually started acting and, and it was it just happened to be at the theater that Kevin held the auditions at and I saw Brian playing Renfield in Dracula and I was very impressed with his role in that. And so later to have gotten to act with him on a couple of other theater performances was was really great. And then to actually um, do clerks with him, I felt at home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk for for a second about, about Kevin. Now, here's a guy who's holding this big audition. You go, you're, you're meeting with him at the convenience store where he's working. Like, overall, what was your impression of, of, of Kevin Smith at that point at Ground Zero and just the whole production in general? I mean, is this, did, did this present a package to you that you were excited to get involved with, or was it something that you had reservations about? Um, I had no reservations, and I, I honestly couldn't really tell you what my first impression of Kevin was. I think... I think I was just excited it's like to be actually asked to be in a film and to actually have a pretty substantial role as well. And, I mean, I didn't, I don't, to my mind, I don't have any preconceived notions that, oh, he's just doing a student film or anything like that. We're all in this together. We're all kind of, you know, learning our experience together mm-hmm. because none of us were, had done a film before. And that's that's actually another question I was going to ask you. Just um, you know, I remember when I was in college, I, I've never been involved in filmmaking, but I did take some film classes, and I remember getting involved with student films for projects and things like that. And I I remember you know doing you know two day little shoots at somebody's house or somebody's dorm, and you know you look around and you realize we're 
just a bunch of kids like, <laughs> putting this thing together, but nobody really knows what they're doing. <laughs> um, and I, it, it's just a sign of, you know, the inherent lack of experience that comes with that age. But how is that sort of the fuel that the the making of Clerks had? Because you had all these people who were, you know, clearly uh, talented, but without really that experience, that leadership uh, ability to say, hey, I've been there and done that, because nobody had been there or done anything. Right. No, I mean, you know, and... In, in, in... The, I mean, the only experience that I had was the theater, which obviously is a different medium, but still, um, it, it's about being, I, you know, for me, being as natural as I possibly could, but, you know, like, let's all be there for each other kind of a thing. Um, and and uh, I just I just wanted to do my best. Um, and, but I mean, that was a lot of dialogue. <laughs> yeah, a, a chatty movie for those who, for whatever reason, have been uh, living under a rock and have never seen Clerks or uh, any of the other uh, View Askew movies, the Kevin Smith movies. That we'll, we'll get to those in a moment too. Um, so, so you you make Clerks. How long did the how how long did it take from start to finish to put this thing together? Um. It's hard for me to say, but I know that for me, um, I know we had uh, maybe about a week of rehearsal prior to start shooting, and then I had, I believe, uh, another maybe five days that I was on set personally, um, my week of not getting a lot of sleep, because it's like if I wasn't on set, I was at work or asleep, or getting whatever little sleep I could. And that was the deal, right? A lot of it was filmed overnight. Yeah, yeah. But that's the that's the only time that he had use of the convenience store because it was pretty busy during the day. Sure, sure. What a story! So the movie is finished. Um, it it starts to be seen. It starts to gain this buzz. It becomes this unbelievable monstrosity. It gets attention throughout the you know, all the way up to the Hollywood community. When this begins, this buzz for this movie, how does this begin to affect, well, you personally, I mean, did this start to actually draw uh, attention to you from media, from journalists, things like that? Yeah, to some degree it did. Um, You know, once, I, I can't remember if it was after we came from Sundance or if it was, after the New York Film Festival, uh, the, yeah, there were a couple of things kind of going on. You know, some media that would come actually to work and and interview me at work uh, at the salon that I was working at at the time. Um, so it was it was quite exciting. It's like trying to figure out also well, what's going to happen. Will this be a stepping stone or not? You know, and and trying to figure it out as well because. Again, still something all very new, and in hindsight, uh, you know, I wish, knowing what I know now, I would have done some things a little bit differently to hopefully kind of maybe push things along a little bit better as well. Well, the thing that's really mind-blowing, and you know, I was just sort of pondering this today, is that if you think about if Clerks were to be released, say, today instead of back then, just imagining all the social media attention and just all mm-hmm. the additional ways that people would be talking about it and, you right. know, debating it. And I mean, it would have been, I, I mean, as big as it was, it would have been almost tailor-made for the now. I mean, it, I, in many ways, it really was ahead of its time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um <sighs> You know, I, I didn't know how to work the publicity angle at that time. Um, you know, there were some interviews that were done with all of us, and there was there were some that were done just with Kevin. And it's like, well, immediately Kevin was able to get an agent and, and manager and all that kind of stuff, and they pretty much supplied everybody for him. Um, and I think thinking back now, uh, again, with what I know now, it's like I – didn't know I could hire my own publicist. I, I didn't know that I can do certain things and, and get myself media attention so that I can 
hopefully get a little buzz behind me as well. I didn't know any of that stuff. I think, and I think collectively we probably could have gotten a publicist or something like that. But who knew? We didn't know. <laughs> How could you know? But I mean, it still had to have been just cool just to ride that that wave of you know all these people talking about you, reading reviews of the movie, and just just mm-hmm. knowing that this movie that you filmed overnight mm-hmm. in a convenience store that was operational at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, ended up going to these major film festivals and being talked about alongside some of the other biggest, most publicized movies of, of that year or that time period. Yeah, and, and you know, and I will say that to some degree too, I had a big fear um, of, oh gosh, well, what if this does go really, really big? It's like, well, what if if this does go really big for us? You know, I mean, there's, you know. Paparazzi wasn't anything like it is today, but it still was pretty bad. And so there was that fear of, it's like, oh, anonymity, not being able to go anywhere, the actual success. I mean, there were a lot of fears behind it all because, again, you know, we're like I said, we're still pretty new. And it's like, wow, um, am I ready? Am I really ready? On a lot of levels, um, am I ready? So... Yeah, uh, you know, I, and I think I think to some degree that did hold me back. And and really, the interesting thing is that's sort of a parallel for what the movie is really all about. Are are you ready to move to the new step in your life? Or and, and that's really what your character was all about because yeah. you represented that that embracing of the future for for Dante yeah. and his reservations in doing so. Did you find that this was a, a character or a part of the movie that was particularly uh, something desirable for you to represent? Was it a, was it a, a character that you really enjoyed playing? Oh, I did very much so, um, and I, I related to her in a lot of ways. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't too much of a stretch for me in, in a lot of respect. Gotcha. Um, you, you mentioned it before, but we got to hit it one more time. And, and I know you had, you had said you had reviewed the script beforehand just to make sure that you were okay with everything uh, from mm-hmm. a moral perspective <laughs> Again, mm-hmm. uh, that went on the movie. So, you know, for those who haven't seen the movie, um, you know, Marilyn played Veronica, who was the main character's girlfriend. And a big part of the movie is his sort of going back and forth, whether he wants to you know, really, truly emotionally commit to this relationship that could represent, you know, it could represent his future. It could represent a family. And, of course, in the sequel, we know it doesn't quite go down that way regardless. But <laughs> um, So it, it, during the course of all this debating, um, certain things come out about your past. And mm-hmm. one of them is your uh, amorous history pre-Dante. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's pretty graphic. People, I'm sure, know it. If not, maybe if they haven't seen the movie, maybe they don't want to know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave it there. But you were, did, did you actually find that to be just straight up comedy for you? Just no problems whatsoever. I, not that I can recall. Yeah, it, it, it was. It wasn't an issue or a problem. Um, but. You know, when I actually am going through those lines and, and letting him know what it is, and, and there's like this certain face on my look, you know, it's that's very real because I was actually picturing it in my head. It's like, wow, that's that's actually pretty gross. Um, but <laughs> um, who knew it would be what it was? You know, um, who knew that it would be me? The reason why, or not necessarily me, but the character and all that kind of stuff that got the SB17 rating. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations on that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh. <laughs> well, but, I mean, I, uh, I remember, uh, I remember seeing the movie in in college, not long after it came out, I guess. And you know, I, to me, and uh, you know, I, I I don't have a grasp of the history of cinema, but to me, it was pretty pretty groundbreaking stuff to be in a movie that I was actually sitting and watching. Uh, <laughs> like on my mm-hmm. television, um, but it it was hilarious, and I, I think the main point of it all is that it was supposed to be, uh, to an extent, something that people could relate to. 
Yeah. Um, even if it was something that was never really expressively uh, said in, in comedies before. But <laughs> the, well, yeah, I mean, and even not for that character, but for all the characters that were in there, I, I feel that anybody can find themselves within any of the characters that are on there. Yeah, it's, I think so. It's pretty real. That's that's, and I think that's really the appeal of that movie, and and a lot of uh, Kevin's work in general is that beyond the the jokes, you know, whether you consider them offensive or not, uh, it's about real emotion. This movie was about growing up, and mm-hmm. uh, that's I think what really drew people to it, even if they didn't know it. Right. Right. So, so you come out of this, and uh, some time goes by. And uh, I'm trying to remember. I don't have it in front of me, really. The the, the history between Clerks and the, the amount of time before that particular universe moved on. I believe Mallrats was the second movie that Kevin made. Uh, where were you in your relationship with Kevin and and uh, just the rest of this family, so to speak? Was there consideration for you to move on to be in Mallrats? Uh, well, we actually were 